Update. My mother-in-law cut up my wedding dress. We talked in person for the first and last time. I don't feel much better, but I got some clarity. Original story. This might sound petty or like something I should just move on from, but I just can't. My mother-in-law was always kind of off to me. I wouldn't say we had a bad relationship, but she wasn't very welcoming or interested. When I got engaged, she didn't seem happy for us. I didn't include her in wedding planning much because we weren't close. But mother-in-law's mom asked me to, so I included her in one thing and she didn't speak the whole time. I store my dress at their house as father-in-law said it was okay. Then I got to call a couple of days before the wedding that she had cut the dress into a million pieces. I literally felt like I was going to throw up. In my mind, no one could be that evil and the dress was fixable. So we went over there, and no, she legit cut it into a million pieces. I really think if my husband didn't hold me back, I would have fought her. We still got married, but I had to wear a cheap replacement, and I couldn't stop crying the entire morning, so it was ruined for me. Mother-in-law said she did it because she didn't get a wedding, and because she never got her turn, and nothing was ever about her. She didn't seem to feel bad. She seemed kind of in shock she had done it, but no remorse. The day after she did it, she attempted to end herself and was brought to the hospital. She got 30 days inpatient, and I don't know details, but her dad was arrested because of something she said. Father-in-law was also taken in for questioning but released, and she filed for divorce the day she got out. Mother-in-law and I are pretty much no contact, but I occasionally see her at family events. She apologized once but didn't seem sorry, and when my husband said he didn't want to talk to her, she didn't seem to care. She no longer talks to my husband or her daughter, but like I said, we see her occasionally, and I've heard she was in intense therapy for about a year. Now she just got engaged and the ring is huge and gorgeous. The guy seems perfect, and I am just so overwhelmed by how much I hate her and how angry I am. People kept saying it wasn't her fault, that she was sick, but I'm at the point where I don't even care. Now for the top advice before reading the update. I'd stop going to events she's invited to and make it clear why. If she's this unhinged, it's not just you she's wronged. She just got engaged and the ring is huge and gorgeous. Guy seems perfect. I can 100% guarantee you that is not. The ring being huge and gorgeous just reinforces what I would have already suspected. That it's performative and a curated image. She's putting on a show. No one that awful could ever trap a nice person long enough to get married. My late mother-in-law managed it five times. And she was a real piece of work. She more than likely has a mental illness that isn't properly treated. But that is no excuse for her behavior or the way she treats you and your husband. It also doesn't mean that you are obligated to forgive her and move on. She went out of her way to ruin your wedding day out of jealousy and malice, and you have every right to be upset. I fully support no contact for the both of you. And if you have children, I wouldn't let them meet her either. She seems dangerous. I wish you a happy life. Happiness that she'll never know. We do have a baby who she has never met, nor asked to meet. I don't know if this is true, but according to her cousin, she tells people she never had children. Thankfully, she doesn't want to meet him. And the one time they were in the same room, she left. She's telling people she doesn't have children? Yeah, she definitely sounds mentally ill to me. I am glad that she doesn't seem interested in your child. That means they're safe from her. Well, she says it in a disowned way, not a delusional way, so I don't know. I don't talk to her, but the few people who do say she's a lot better. I'm relieved though, because I thought she would reach out when he was born. Now for the update. I was shocked by how much the last post blew up and how much empathy it got. I thought a lot more people would say suck it up and that it was only a dress. Truly thank you. And I am looking into booking a therapy appointment to talk about how much anger I have over this. A couple people pointed out that if I wanted to know why mother-in-law's dad had been arrested, I could look it up online. I wasn't aware of how easy it was to find that stuff, so my husband and I discussed it and we both wanted peace of mind. I looked it up. But it was not what I was expecting at all. I'm not going to go into too many details because if someone recognizes this, it is not my story to tell. It is mother-in-law's. But pretty much, she was forced and potentially sold into marrying father-in-law. We both immediately felt sick because we let father-in-law and mother-in-law's mom around our toddler son. We are still close to father-in-law and our son adores him. I really felt like for my son's sake that I needed clarity. I asked the cousin mother-in-law was close to. 
if she could convey to mother-in-law that we had some questions and wanted to talk. Mother-in-law's blocked us on everything and changed her number. I mentioned that I tried looking her up in social media but couldn't find her. The cousin told me it is because mother-in-law took her new husband's name, which I didn't know they were married, and her cousin started talking about how beautiful the wedding was. I had originally heard they were going to elope, but she said that was because mother-in-law thought it was tacky to have a wedding past 30, but he convinced her she should have that wedding she always wanted. It really did feel like it punched the gut, and I know I have a lack of willpower. But when the cousin brought out her phone, I didn't stop her. I vowed it would be the last picture of her I ever looked at, and then seeing her in her white dress just really hit me. That it isn't fair. I don't know what I expected. She modeled for a long time, she works in high-end fashion, but the wedding pictures were gorgeous, and it really pissed me off. Anyway, the cousin let me use her phone. I told mother-in-law what was going on, and that I needed clarity and to know exact details of who was safe around my son. Mother-in-law agreed to meet up. I felt my heart sink, but I thought maybe I would get closer. We met at a coffee place. They were already there when we walked in. And the first thing out of mother-in-law's mouth was that she still wants to be no contact. And she just wants to be abundantly clear that there will not be a relationship. Fine, we didn't want one either. Mother-in-law answered my questions. And it was really hard. But grandmother-in-law and father-in-law can't see our son anymore. They just can't. I don't think they are safe people. And mother-in-law provided evidence for the stuff she was saying. Which honestly made me sad for her because I never doubted. Mother-in-law then brought up the wedding dress on her own. She said she snapped because it was another thing she was forced to pay for. And she was tired of working so hard so everyone else could have things she couldn't. She felt that we watched and aided in her mistreatment, which I don't think is fair because while there were a lot of red flags, there's a lot of stuff we didn't know about. Pretty much all of this mistreatment was a way to keep her under control so her parents and father-in-law could take her money, and mother-in-law did not want to pay for the things she did for her kids, such as weddings, cars, and house for sister-in-law. She brought up that she never got her turn because she was sedated when she married father-in-law. She never got to do stuff like proms or birthday parties because of modeling, and she said cutting the dress was cathartic. My husband pretty much told her to shut up because he knew it was upsetting me. Mother-in-law's husband pointed out that we pulled up in a car she bought and said we are both pieces of crap for still driving it. Mother-in-law was quiet for a while and just put her head down on him. It was super awkward and I wanted to leave. Finally, her husband said that it is kind of funny because everyone got what they deserved. She finally got her wedding and I know he was implying that we got what we deserved. He asked if she wanted to go. She said yes and walked out without saying goodbye to my husband. On one hand, I understand that mother-in-law did not agree to have him and views him as something she was forced to do so her parents could control her money. But it makes me mad that she acts like he was a partner in this crime. We are going to have to cut a lot of people out. There are a lot of details I didn't share and they just aren't safe people. What happened to mother-in-law is like something out of a horror movie. They all know but gaslit her for years. Honestly, I wish her the best in the sense that she deserves a life. And I know a lot of people are skeptical about the new husband, but he seemed very sincere. I wish her the best in life, but I'm pissed she got the wedding after she ruined mine. I told the cousin that I do not want any more updates, and for my mental health, I will no longer attend events she is at. Have you considered renewing your vows so you can get the dress of your dreams and have a little do-over? We are thinking about doing that for our 10th. You should do it and have the wedding you want. You will get what you deserved. Your mother-in-law was traumatized and proceeded to take it out on her children. It's a shame, but you're definitely better off without her in your life. If she's such a mess that she enjoys ruining her son's wedding for the audacity of being born, there's no maternal relationship to be had. This isn't to diminish what happened to her at all. Like I said, have a nice life. See you never. Meanwhile, I think you need to look out for your husband. As distant as he may have been with his mother, He's lost her now. He's lost any normalcy with his father and grandmother. He's probably going through some really rough times, so be there for him. I don't know that take it out on her children or enjoys ruining her son's wedding appropriately illustrates the complex trauma of being forced to pay for and rear the progeny of your violator. Like, it sounds as though the woman was a lifelong pleasure slave. How devastating. And how devastating for Opie's husband. Not for not having good family relationships, but for the kind of sickness that's in his family line. I'd be shocked if someone wanted to continue to benefit from that as well.
Now for the next story, update. I, 30 female, caught my husband, 31 male, in an affair, and I don't know how to move forward. Original story. I've suspected things have been going on for a while, but kept brushing it off. I thought he would never do that to me. Since around April, he's been refusing my attempts to have intimacy most of the time, sitting differently on the couch to where he's facing away from me. Little things. It's with one of our good friends. She came to my house a few weeks ago, she's texted me, and she's pretended to be there for me. I found out because I rolled over and they were having a Snapchat conversation. She said she wished she could be there to hold him, and he summarized that I tried to seduce him last night and mocked it. I confronted him and he admitted it. He said that it was because quarantine was stressful. He does not want to work things out, and he thinks of me only as a friend in his heart. When I told her husband, he confronted her, and apparently they actually kissed back in February. I think at that moment that I was never going to be enough for him. We used to be so, so, so happy. The week before they kissed, we celebrated Valentine's Day together. He bought us a nice bottle of wine for our anniversary. We had fun, and we were perfect. I don't know where to go from here. We've been married only about a year, and I feel like he took so much from me, and doesn't even want to go to therapy to work this out. I don't want to leave my house, but everywhere in it, I see him. He chose her. I've been cheated in every relationship I've ever been in, but he was supposed to be my forever. I don't know what to do. I've made therapy appointments, but I was also laid off last month, so I have too much free time to analyze every single moment where he might have been lying to me or where I made myself pathetic trying to cling to him. How do I start to get through this? Now for the top advice before reading the update. Lawyer first. Get the divorce filed and get their advice on it if it's okay for you to leave the house while things are processing. As for the other, you need to fill your time. Devote yourself to hobbies, including picking up new ones. Rely on friends, long video calls, watching movies together, etc. Fill as much of your time as you can until things start to process. I'm so sorry I gave up on you without even trying, hon. You deserve far better than that. It's a shame some people are so good at hiding how little respect they have for other folks. But please, hold on to the fact that none of this was your fault. There is absolutely zero reason for a partner to cheat, ever. And there is absolutely no justification that can put even a shred of the blame on you. Thank you. The worst thing is that he tried to turn it on me this morning, that things had been off. But it only started being off when he started this affair and he began gaslighting me. You can't go to therapy and work this out. It only gets worked out if both people want to put the effort in. And your husband has made it very clear he's not interested in trying to make the relationship work. He directly told you that. You need to find a lawyer and file for divorce. Thank you. I guess it's just hard to watch him blow up his own life so spectacularly. It's like I'm watching a cruel puppet of my husband. Finding out this news is going to be a swirl of emotions and conflicting urges, like a spinning top that's wobbling. But once you speak to a lawyer, start getting your divorce going, lean on friends, family, and potentially personal therapist, you'll start to balance out again. I already have a session booked with a therapist, because holy hell, I'm going to need it. Now for the update. First of all, I just want to thank everyone here for the support I received following my first post back in August. At the time, I truly felt like my world was ending. It was important to me to make this update because I need to tell anyone who's currently going through the same thing that it gets better. You'll get so much better. I had one conversation with my husband since everything happened, by his choice. It lasted maybe five minutes and was like talking to a robot. I know from others that he cries to people about how he ruined his life, but I have never once gotten an apology or the same show of regret. At this point, I don't care. I know him and the other women are still seeing each other, and frankly, they deserve each other. Good for them. While I still feel angry occasionally, I no longer mourn what I once had. Instead, I'm so excited for the life I now get to live. I moved to a small walkable city and gave myself my dream apartment. It makes me so happy to see how I've decorated it, and to just live in a cozy place instead of our old dreary house. I was the breadwinner in our marriage, and he would make me feel awful about wanting to pay for nice meals or do fun things. Since moving here, I've done a ton of foodie fun stuff don't feel guilty. It's so refreshing. I have dipped my toe into the dating pool again, and had plenty of mediocre dates from dating apps. Recently, I found someone who I've really clicked with, and I'm enjoying how appreciated and desired has made me feel. It's definitely early and we're moving slow, 
but overall, dating has made me realize that I'm a catch who doesn't have to settle. Therapy has done wonders, but I'm so happy I immediately dove into it. My therapist is proud of me. I'm proud of me. I've stopped looking at being divorced as a failure. He failed, not me. I'm genuinely happy and excited to wake up each morning, and no longer feel like this terrible weight is sitting on my chest. The holidays were surprisingly easy, and I found myself so happy to spend time with my family without having to compromise anything. So, all in all, life is good, and there's so much of it ahead. Looking back, I can't believe I wasted so much time thinking about how I could get him to come home. I've made my own home, and my own happiness, and that is worth so, so much more. I'm going through a breakup that has left me feeling lost and broken. This gives me so much hope for the future. Tomorrow morning, my journey begins as I go talk to a therapist for the first time and begin the road to recovery. Thank you for being so strong and sharing your story so others may find their strength through you. You're amazing. So many people told me things would get better, but honestly, I didn't believe it until I started feeling it myself. Just keep putting that faith in yourself. And remember, you're so much stronger than you think. You've already done the biggest step, signing up for therapy. Yay, congrats. There's nothing like living alone in your own perfect space, am I right? My bedroom is so damn feminine now, and I live for it. The first purchase I made when I divorced my husband of eight years, ah, marriage at 19, why, ugh, was perfect salmon pink sheets with white, navy, and mustard yellow line drawn feathers on them. They were the biggest symbol of freedom to me, more than the judge's signature, more than even my own space. It was those sheets. Three plus years later, I still have them and use the pillowcases. And I plan on making something out of the sheets that will be useful but preserve the fabric. Perhaps a summer weight quilt. To be surrounded by femininity, but it makes you stronger. Beauty in action.